Well, um, yeah, so I'm going to go over the some project examples here. Um, so we're going to go through kind of the two separate parts of level 2A and level 2B. Um, and this is kind of not the requirement is not to have everything look as if it does on my set of projects, but this is just one set of projects that kind of fits the metric. But this is what I did last October, I believe, in order to fulfill my level A and level 2B. So um, if you do want to do some other projects, then talk with an instructor and get those pre-approved. And we probably won't have uh, too big of an issue if it covers the same skills. So the first one was a welded ring. It's just a quarter by one inch flat bar bent into a circle. Um, the instructions say to complete it to dimension, but it doesn't give a dimension. So I'm suggesting that you pick any whole number. So I picked six inches. So the outside was six inches and then you have to forge weld it. And of course I picked the best side so you can't see the forge weld, it's right there. Um, then next we have the basket handle poker. We've already gone over that. Um, so I'm not gonna say too much about that. That's a good practice in forge welding. Um, next is the forge scrolling fork, which we've also talked about. So I won't cover much about that. And then the scrolling jig, that's also um, something that we covered. And for this, you guys can arc weld it. So you kind of have the option to do arc welding, or if you want to just do traditional where you bend it to hold it in the vise. Next up is frame with sharp square corners, a radius corner, and a mortise and tenon. This is kind of another example of a level two grill. This used to be the old uh, grill California used and Montana as well. So this is what I use for my level two grill. And then scrolling tongs, these are made from flat stock and they can either have forged reins or welded reins. So, and scrolls, um, but if you don't have all of the scrolls in your grill, which you, you won't, then you can just make these samples of the other scrolls and include those during your requirement checkout. The next one is a square corner collar. Um, and a wrapped collar. So you have an option. The square cornered collar is this one here where you actually have to forge square corners in it, which is a lot more difficult. And so is perhaps not a good choice to choose for your level two grill, unless you're really wanting extra punishment. And then the other option is wrapped collars. And for that, you have a choice of a beaded collar that has this raised center bead. So you have to actually make a bottom swage and forge that in there. Um, or uh, for this level grill, you can just incise it with a chisel, either a central or a couple incised lines. So that'll do the collar. We're doing square and diamond drifts. So these drifts need to be sized so that you can clear half inch stock when it's cold. So you're your material is going to cool off and shrink down a little bit. And as that happens, you need to oversize your drift by a few percent in order to make sure that clears. Um, so we'll have a, a slot to square and then a slot to diamond. So that one is turned at a 45. That's the center one. And then around the square uh, as well. So those are all the drifts. And then we come over here and this is the bolster plate. It doesn't have to be fancy, just something that can support your stock better than what your hardy hole can do, or perhaps if your pritchel is not quite the right size. So that's gonna be a bolster plate for drifting. Um, this also can have an optional half round bottom swage. So that's for when you're punching our, uh, your round stock that it doesn't flatten the bottom as bad. Um, and then you'll see this other V uh, bottom swage a little bit later. Um, so here's some nine punched and drifted holes. There's not really a prescription of the sizes or anything. So, but they do want you to do these in square stock, round stock and flat stock. And then, 
the holes that you're looking for are a round hole, a square hole, and a diamond hole in each of those. So initially, I was going to try to get all three of mine in one piece, and I decided that was too much punishment, so I split them up. <laughs> but I think it, I I also thought it'd be neat to have one piece that was forged flat and then square and then round on one piece. Then you would really be asking for it. But and then finally, culmination of the level two A is the grill, and you can design your own grill and. I believe Becky is going to talk more about that later. Um, you just need to have that design approved by an instructor so that way they know that you are forging it to the dimensions in your drawing instead of drawing it to the dimensions that you forged. So um, then we're going to move into level 2B. Abama has decided to kind of put one more step before people start on level 3. And that was to kind of help people just like have a jump start on level three. So it wasn't such a large gap between level two and three. So this is tooling that you're going to need to use to make the grill in level three. So to start out, there's a tapered hammer eye drift um, for the leafing hammer. Uh, here's your leafing hammer. And you can use that, uh, use your level one tools. Uh, like a slot punch and a drift to do that head. And you'll use that for the leaves in your level three grill. The crimping stake, that's gonna be used for your water leaves in level three. And you can use that, uh, you can forge that so that it fits in a hardy. You can fabricate it. Um, so it's something that'll fit in a vise or a hardy. Um, and that's where, there's a little bit of room for people to do some of these using their shop equipment with fabrication where it's not a finished good that goes into your grill. Uh, we're trying to help people along just to get some of the manual labor out of it. And then same thing with the leafing stake. This is used to cup and curl those water leaves and that can be for a hardy hole or a vise as well. Um, there's cold chisels. Uh, these are a cape. So let me see. We have a cape is in the middle, a uh, gouge, and a diamond. And that's used for building yourself a heading plate. And that heading plate is over here. That's going to be used to help make your top and bottom tools when you're doing your uh, collar, your welded collar. So you're gonna drill this out first and then clean up the corners using your cold chisels and then finally file it completely square. So that has some bench work, which is the chiseling and the filing as one aspect, which is kind of always uh, one of the cornerstones of an apprentice program. So they wanted to keep that in here to make sure people had those skills. Then this is the top and bottom tools. This is used for making that beading co beaded collar. Uh, make sure all of the edges are radiused. This is, you can see, well, I don't know, depending on resolution. Uh, some of mine has some lines coming across and that's because I didn't get my edges radiused enough. So I'm gonna have to take mine apart and radius those edges some more. Um, and that can be forged and fabricated, kind of a mixture of both. I made the uh, top and bottom tools and then I welded that uh, the spring to keep them centered. And then that's a handle to help you open it. Um, and then the welded collar, we've kind of seen a similar one on the basket uh, handle poker. And that will have a butt weld as well as a circumferential weld against the bar stock. We did the punch and drift angle pass throughs, and that's the staggered punching that uh, Mark had talked about, I think, in our first class. And then uh, this was that bottom V swage we talked about. That's if you want to uh, punch across the corners of a square bar. It helps you hold it at an angle there, and that way you don't flatten your bottom corner. Um, and you can just make this out of heavy flat bar rather than using uh, 
Uh, there's upset uh, bottom swages you can make for your hardies. Those things take a lot more work to make. So you can make these quickly uh, out of heavy flat bar. And you can use a square bar on the diamond and just pound that in there. When you do it, make sure you radius these two edges coming in and out of the block. That way you don't get marks on your stock. Final one is the box jaw tongs. Uh, if you have those for a level two, it'll be handy for that as well. If you can sneak some three eighths by three quarter in there. Um, and these box jaw tongs need to have welded reins. So that's one of the requirements is the uh, drop tong weld for the level two B. So that pretty much um, sums up the level two A and level two B. And then you will have some sign off sheets. Um, we're looking to get at least two instructors looking at your work and they can make sure that it's fitting on the website. There's a list of some of the things to look for in finished forged work. So probably before you guys continue, you might wanna take some time and peruse that. And that'll give you some ideas as far as what kind of quality people are looking for. So with that, I'm just going to move into the grill drawings. Valerie has put a viewable link of this 3D model on the uh, web page. You can go, get to this 3D model, and this spins around in space. So it's pretty nice to be able to look from any angle at that grill. So I'm just going to run through the pages of the grill, what I think is important on each page. Um, this should have most of those requirements that Becky talked about, um, and I think it helps people just to get a view from all angles, so this is just the 3D view. Hopefully your grill does not uh, look like this when you're done and it has a little bit more character. So the notes, this has a lot of those requirements that should be in a grill, whether it be one that you follow with this design or your own design. So if you're thinking about making your own design, read through this first. That has that similar four inch ball and you're mostly gonna be making it out of a three eighths and three quarter stock for the outside frame. Then we have overall dimensions. This is you know, just what you're shooting for. So if you're printing that out, check these dimensions to make sure that's what you have in the end. Um, there's also tolerances on a lot of these. So if you are forging this dimension to dimension, you're going to be shooting for uh, 12 and a half inches and you have a 16th of an inch both ways of wiggle room. So if you're off by a quarter inch, you may, may need to go back to the drawing board and tighten things up a little bit. Uh, so that just kind of gives you an idea of what the instructors are gonna be looking for when they are checking your dimensions. Dimensions that are in parentheses, like this one eighth of an inch, are just there kind of for a benefit, but they're not gonna be checked in any way. It's just to show that you can have an overhang on that if you bolt to the corner out. So this will tell you the stock sizes. Um, again, if it's in parentheses, that's not a requirement. That's just a suggestion three eighths by three quarters, that's what Becky was using. And you can also use three eighths by one if you can't find that other size. So that just gives you some of the more details. This is the upset square corner looking for a radius of three sixteenths. Um, and then the locations of these scrolls are not important. You can also do a symmetric grill if you would like, although it may be more difficult to get matching scrolls, but um, as an engineer, I think I like the symmetric grills better. It's a character flaw, perhaps. Um, and then this is those incised collars, which I kind of talked about, touched on earlier. If you do whatever scrolls you do in here, you will finish the rest of your scrolls when you're making those samples. Uh, another thing to note here, is that if you opt to put the beveled scrolls down here, it may be slightly more difficult because as you have that twist coming out of the bar, it's harder to capture in a collar. So up here, you can keep that open a little bit and still get a rivet or a screw 
or even skip that and do a screw up here. So um, it may make it more difficult if you do shy away from some of these details in the drawings. Now these are just individual scroll views. Um, I just put these in there so people could get a better feel for what these scrolls look like. And they're mostly self-explanatory. If you look at these from all different angles, you can kind of see uh, what's going on better. These are the ones Frank didn't cover, a fishtail snub and scroll or a bolt in fishtail. You may need to forge weld a bolt in there or roll this up tight and forge weld it together just because of the extra width and mass in there. Um, this is the half penny twist. If you look here, it gives you a pretty big illusion of mass, even though it's uh, not big in mass in the other direction. So that's why that one's used a lot because it's almost a freebie. And then that solid snub is upset slightly just to give it a little bit more uh, diameter than what your parent thought stock was. And then the beveled scrolls, these are taper, then bevel and bend a preform. Make sure you do that preform when it's flat. And then um, you want to make sure you trace your preform before you can continue bending. That way you kind of have a map of where you came from and you can see where you went and you can change what that preform is as you do your second or third one. And then whenever you're doing those, always make sure you're perpendicular over the horn. Finally, these are the samples that you'll need to include alongside your grill when you're getting checked out. So this isn't inclusive of every school, but this is the ones that we're looking for as part of this. Um, and then finally, the last two pages, which is also in the hammers below, you can print these out full scale. If you put no scale or 100%, you should be able to get this on an eight and a half by 11 sheet and then cut the bottom off. Just cut the top of this one off and tape it to the bottom of the other one. And that should give you a full size. And what I've done is I've traced it onto the metal using one of these copies. And then I also keep a clean copy. And that is just that I don't lay my metal on so that I can see my dimensions. And then I also have a printed one just so that I can get more accurate because sometimes it's a little tricky with a marker or a soapstone line to know exactly where you're at. So if you have a paper copy, you can do that and you keep your notes on a cleaner one. That is where we're at.